Like I said, this is the second part of the demo. If you look, I've officially completed my underpainting. Okay, so because my area, so if you look at my finished, it's all black background. I'm not gonna worry about the background, but if you have a solid background, you need to do that first. Now, the next step that I work on is usually glazes. And like I said before, a lot of that is getting the color right. So I have my tester paper right here. My original image. And so what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to work in layers. So building up different layers and matching those colors as close as I can. And I'm also going to work light to dark. So if you look here, I'm going to start with the skin as just the basic um, intro. I'm not gonna obviously paint the entire thing in front of you. So I have a skin tone. I created the skin tone. Um, to create the skin tone for this, I used white with a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of vermilion, and a little bit of the crimson red. And I just kept mixing them. White was my base. And then it was just tiny, tiny amounts of all of these colors to create the right skin tone. And then I tested it by putting it on the tester strip, like the tester paper, and putting it next to her. So looking at that, I was like, yeah, that's pretty even skin tone. So what I do then is I have my paint now. I mix it with a little bit of water, so I don't want it too watery, but I do want it kind of there. And then I'm going to do a layer. Okay, so I'm doing, I'm being more careful than I have been with the other paints. And the idea is I don't want to completely block out my pencils. Your darks and your lights should be able to show through underneath this layer. So everything that should be skin toned gets covered. So also be careful when you're doing this because I don't want you to paint over the eyes or you don't want to paint over the other areas that don't have the skin tone color on it. You just want to be very gentle with it. If it's so dark or if it's so opaque that when you're painting over it, it is completely blocking out your pencil lines and it's completely blocking out the shadows that you created. You have gone too dark. You need to add a little bit more white, or sorry, a little bit more water to even it out so that you can still see what you're working with. And again, be careful. I don't want to block out my eyes because my eyes are not completely skin tone. And so I'm going to try to cover all the areas that have that skin tone. So it's in her neck as well. So I'm going to paint in her neck. And her ear, of course. Is everyone doing it different? Yep, everyone's different. I'm just showing them how I'm doing mine. And as Miss was mentioning, this all depends on your technique that you have been researching. So whatever the technique that your artist used, you want to do that. This is just like a basic glaze. So now that I've got her face covered, I'm going to leave the face alone and give it a second to dry. Um, for me, I'm going to move on to her lips because that's another lower area. For the areas like the scarf around her head and also for her clothing, um, I might take a little bit more time because I think I have to mix the correct colors for that but I know her lips, I have everything on my palette that I can use. So for this, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. You don't really need to, it's just I'm working much smaller than you are. So again, have to have that picture next to me. I know that vermilion was the basic color that they were using for her lips. So then I'm gonna test it. Nope, on this paper, it's still too bright. 
little bit of white in there. It's too pinky. And I'm constantly testing on this paper to see what color I'm supposed to be using. So again, putting a little bit more vermilion in there, just checking. It's going to keep going darker. Yeah. So as I'm going along, again, I'm not going to keep you guys here because things are going to get loud. We've got stuff going on in the classroom. But that's what you're doing. It's a time-consuming process. You want to put a layer down and you want to constantly just keep checking against your image whether or not you're correct. You do not want to put anything down until you're confident that you're correct. So keep doing that. Keep working on it. Try to find something that matches the colors that you're working with. And then once I've done the layer of all the colors, I will come back and show you the next part.